people who outlived insane prison sentences. When contemplating a life sentence, the common assumption is that a criminal will spend their final moments confined within prison walls. However, reality often diverges from this preconceived notion. Numerous individuals serving life sentences find themselves re-entering society, encountering a vastly altered life compared to the one they once knew. This unexpected turn of events challenges conventional perspectives on the implications and outcomes of life sentences. Welcome to the channel, subscribe, and let's dive in. Eddie Collins, 43 years. Let's delve into the life of Eddie Collins, not to be confused with the American baseball player. Eddie has spent the last 43 years behind bars, serving time for a grave offense, first degree murder. At 21 years old, Eddie resided in Tucson, Arizona, in a neighborhood rife with challenges. Tragically, his life took a drastic turn during a fateful drug transaction with his 17-year-old brother. An altercation escalated, and in a moment of rash decision-making, Eddie drew his gun. That single moment forever altered the course of his life. Reflecting on that haunting incident, Eddie remarked, It was a sad situation, something I regret and still regret. This profound regret underscores the gravity of his actions and the enduring impact it has had on him. Eddie Collins' story serves as a somber reminder of the consequences of one impulsive action. His journey through the criminal justice system unveils the complexities and human tragedies that often lie behind these cases, urging us to understand the context in which these events occur and the individuals whose lives are forever changed. Otis Johnson, 44 years. Let's shed light on Otis, a man who has endured a 44-year-long confinement after being incarcerated at the age of 25 for the attempted murder of a police officer. Emerging from the confines of the 1970s, he now faces the daunting task of reintegrating into a society vastly transformed by complex technology. However, Otis is not simply a convict. He's a man who committed a terrible crime. The weight of his actions hangs heavily upon him as he grapples with the reality of re-entering a world where life has evolved drastically during his absence. In 1998, he lost touch with his family, leaving him isolated and estranged from his loved ones. At the age of 69, with the majority of his life spent behind bars, Otis is now faced with the challenge of surviving in a world he no longer recognizes. Upon his release, the prison provided him with minimal resources, a mere $40, two bus tickets, and his identification. However, $40 is a paltry sum, barely sufficient for a few days' worth of food. He must navigate the complexities of modern bureaucracy to renew his identification, all while grappling with the harsh reality of homelessness. Unable to work due to his age, Otis faces a monumental struggle to sustain himself financially. Otis's story serves as a stark reminder of the long-lasting consequences of one fateful decision made over four decades ago. It urges us to reflect on the need for reform and support systems to assist individuals like Otis in their challenging journey towards reintegration. John Franzese, 50 years, Enter John, a centenarian mobster whose release from a 50-year prison sentence on June 23 this year has stirred up a flurry of emotions and debates. This notorious figure and underboss of the Colombo crime organization carries with him a dark legacy of boasting about his involvement in at least 60 homicides during his lifetime in crime. The audacity of releasing such an individual back into society is both shocking and perplexing. While age may have physically weakened him, the shadows of his past loom large. The haunting question remains, can someone with such a violent history truly be harmless in their twilight years? John's release raises critical concerns about justice, public safety, and the reintegration of a once-feared criminal into a changed world. His boasts of extinguishing 60 lives reflect the callousness that define his criminal career, making it difficult to believe in a genuine transformation. Society grapples with this complex situation, torn between the need for rehabilitation and the demands of justice. The plight of those who never got a chance at life due to his actions amplifies the moral dilemma surrounding his release. John's story is a stark reminder of the delicate balance society must navigate when it comes to rehabilitation, punishment, and safeguarding the well-being of its citizens. Harvey Stewart, 60 years, meet Harvey Stewart, a man released back into society in 2011 at the remarkable age of 83, after a staggering 60 years behind bars. His story is a tapestry of crime, from junkyard heists in Houston to the darkest act of taking a life. During his long sentence, the world around him evolved, and he remained isolated from the changing tides of society. Returning to the outside world after such a prolonged period must have been an overwhelming shock for Harvey. 
When he was sentenced, a Volkswagen Beetle cost a mere $1,700 and shoes were a bargain at 10 bucks. John F. Kennedy held the presidency and humanity ventured into space for the first time. The Beatles, a name that now reverberates through history, released their debut single Love Me Do in the UK. But Harvey Stewart emerged into a world dramatically altered, a world of fidget spinners and YouTube stars like the Paul brothers captivating the masses. The sheer magnitude of change that he faced, both technologically and culturally, is inspiring. Adapting to a world where information travels at the speed of light and trends change in a blink is an extraordinary feat, especially for someone who has been disconnected for so long. As he grapples with these seismic shifts, Harvey Stewart's journey becomes a testament to resilience and the human spirit. It's a story of trying to find a place in a world that has moved on, leaving behind a legacy of crime and embracing a chance at redemption. Hugh Alderman, 62 years, meet Hugh, a notorious bank robber whose life of crime began at the tender age of 23 in 1917. His path was marked by a series of daring heists, but fate dealt a harsh hand. Hugh found himself as the sole survivor of a four-man gang, resulting in a prison sentence that commenced in his youthful years. Intriguingly, Hugh managed not one but two escapes from prison, showcasing his audacity. However, in 1927, he found himself in a mental hospital where he eventually passed away at 86 years old. His life, mauled by criminal pursuits, led to a tragic end. Hugh's motivation, though criminal, was driven by a desire for financial gain without the toil of honest work. He succeeded in stealing $6,000, a substantial sum at the time. To put it in perspective, considering inflation, that amount would equate to approximately $124,000 in today's value. Hugh's story serves as a cautionary tale, revealing the high cost of a life spent pursuing ill-gotten gains. Charles Edward Ford's 64 years, meet Charles, a man whose life was irrevocably altered by a wrongful conviction in the early 1950s. At just 20 years old, he faced an uphill battle within a deeply prejudiced society. Charles, an African-American, stood before an all-white jury, devoid of the rights and justice he deserved. Tragically, Charles was convicted of murder, setting off a harrowing journey through a 64-year-long prison sentence. The weight of injustice bore heavily on him as his youthful years faded away within the confines of a cell. It's a stark reminder of the systemic racism that mawed that era where lives were shattered based on the color of one's skin rather than evidence and truth. Last year, after decades of enduring and innocence denied, Charles was finally granted his freedom. At 86 years old, he stepped out into a world vastly different from the one he was unjustly isolated from for the majority of his life. It's a poignant and heartbreaking testament to the flawed legal system and the deep-seated racial prejudices that have scarred so many lives throughout history. Charles now resides in a nursing center, trying to rebuild what remains of his life and find some semblance of peace after enduring an unimaginable ordeal. His story is a somber reflection of a society that failed to deliver justice and the dire need for reform to prevent such atrocities from occurring again. Thank you for watching, follow for more.